Next up, we got people that aren't he- are, are healthy. They're not hurt anymore. At least that's some positive. We lose a couple of guys. We gain a couple of guys here and there. Move people in and out. That's what we do. Evan Neal Baby, and JMS back. both back to work at camp there, guys. So that's and, – and the interesting one of this whole thing really is, let's be honest, it's the Evan Neal story. Like that's that's been the story of this off season a lot. Like, will he be a starter when he comes back? You know, will he come back even? Who is he? Where is he? Because he's been kind of disappearing since we saw him working on on an exercise bike during OTAs there. So doing his old uh, Wicked Witch of the West thing. He's getting used to flipping burgers. Yeah, he should get used to that. But you know, I got I got to give the guy a little credit here. Because he had a press conference that he was, you know, part of there. And at the press conference, he was asked, you know, what the plan is for him. He said, whatever role the team has for me, I'm going to embrace it. I'm not owed anything. All I want is what I work for. That's, that's a good so answer. That's a perfect answer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's been talks about he's open to now playing guard. He's open to being a swing tackle and a backup if he has to be. He's just, you know, wants to get back to playing football. So I, I think everything that's gone down and seeing Illuminor come in and do much better than he has at right tackle, I think that's kind of humble the man a little bit, to be honest with you. And that's not it's not a bad thing. Sometimes yeah. you gotta especially when you've been a star. People think like these guys, oh, these guys came in with a high draft status. Why they all have an ego. No, it's not that they have an ego because of where they're drafted. They have an ego because of where they're drafted, how they played in college, how they got scouted in college, how they played in high school. Like there's these people have yeah. been great for you know, you go, okay, yeah, they're like twenty two to twenty four years old, these guys typically, and you go act act like everything's new. Like, no, these guys have been six to eight years of being touted as amazing. It does get to your head. Like, no, it's been longer than that because most of these guys are studs in Pee Wee football. Well, I'm just going back to high school. Who knows? Well, I'm just saying, but like like, this kid kid, uh, this kid's got something. Oh, you could be something great. And like, you know, coach takes on to you, works on to you. Like, so like as a young young kid to a young man, like you're and told like you're special, you're something good, like that may be better. Like you know, they get embraced and like they're beating up like on there are people like Marshall Lynch. It's a the typical like Central Jersey story. Like, sure uh, be fine. yeah, sorry, not Marshall Lynch. Uh, but uh, I'm running back those on Broncos. I just went playing his team. Uh, with, which one? Uh, down south. Um, what? No, Sean Marino. Yeah, No, Sean Marino. Way off. But same thing. Like that kid was a huge kid in eighth grade. He was like your size. Well, he was. Yeah, he was from our neck of the woods. That's why we. That's why we're using. That's what I'm saying. Like, but I'm just using an example because like he was a humongous kid. Was that? He went to Middletown South High School, didn't he? That's what I said, Middletown South. Yeah. yeah. So, like, he's getting told all these great things. So, once he gets to the NFL, and where was he drafted? Fourth round? He was actually, I, I thought, earlier than that. He could have been. But, I like, look up. his whole life, and especially people around here know the story. Like, he was a stud. Just, he, the kid was great. And you go into the NFL, and now you're swimming with the Sharks. Like, you're in deep sea fishing. He was a 12th pick of the draft, dude. Oh, was he that high? <laughs> Holy shit. Definitely not the fourth round. <laughs> Maybe. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he but, was. He, he Yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, Yeah. 12th pick in the draft overall. Did, definitely didn't live up to that draft pick. That's for damn sure. But you're saying, like. Much you like know, much like Evan Eagle we're talking about here. Yeah. Their whole life is to hold their someone special. Yeah, no, I and get then it. go. They go with everyone else that's been told there's someone special. and That's what I'm saying. I'm hoping this humbled him yeah. a little bit because the route he was going, and I'm not just saying the product in the field. I'm saying the flipping burgers comment he made at the fans last year and stuff like that. Like That's not going to win you any support. And yeah. you, you, you got to cut it back at that point. Just work on your craft because if you want to win people over, a witty comment is not going to do it. Playing well in the field is what's going to do it. That's 100%. That's all that can do. Yeah. Um, now the other guy back again, JMS, John Michael Schmitz, our second round pick last year, uh, is getting his back on the field as well. So on Sunday, they had him just doing individual drills, which is fine. That's typical. You want to ease him back into practice. You don't want to sit there and throw him on once at that point. That shoulder has been an issue for him going back to last year. So you really want him healthy and ready to go at that point. Um, my big hope is he's healthy enough to go against the Texans on Sunday, on Saturday. I mean, that's, that's my big hope because, Live game reps for this entire line as a cohesive unit 
is so key it's, right now. It's not even funny, guys. Like this, even with with his injury, it's caused issues because you know he had John Runyon who was originally at right guard. Now he's moved over to left guard. Greg uh, Greg Van Roten's been playing center a lot because of JMS being out, but he's played a little right guard now as well. You know, you've had Schlotman going into center to play at times as well, so Van Roten can move over. You've had Stinney over a left. I mean, I want a five-team group, you know, a five-player group at that point, playing next to each other, getting the live reps, game practice, everything, because it is so important when you play line to know what's going what's gonna to happen to the guy next to you. And when you play long enough, you don't have to guess. You know. You just know which direction this person is going to step, which direction they're going to move at that point. You have to look over. You just know where they're at. And that's that's so key to gain. And listen, guys, we'll gain it either way. Like I actually have a lot of faith in this line. Again, not to be that I think it's going to be an amazing line, but I think it's going to be a whole lot better than we've had lately the last couple of years. That's for I was going to say, comparison to last year, yes, I have a yeah. whole lot of faith in this line. Whole, Do I have a whole lot of faith they're going to be a top five line? This no, year? No, no, no. God, no. But I have a lot of faith in this line to be we're aiming for mediocrity. Better. Yeah. Yes. We'll take a C plus or a C minus <laughs> yeah. or C even. Like we'll, we'll be fine with that. Like we just want to pass in grade finally. <laughs> so Please. Please. you know, but it's key to get him back, and it's good to get him back. Because if you don't think this team is better with him, you're crazy. I mean, he was highly touted coming out of Minnesota, obviously for a reason. He was considered by most people the best center in the entire draft, unless you. Or the Jets, apparently, because they took Tipman first. But <laughs> otherwise, most people had him as the best center in the draft. We did at that point, and we want to be right. So, therefore, we're hoping good things. <laughs> <laughs> if you like that clip, then you will love the full episodes, too. Find us on your favorite podcast app and look for us on all your favorite social media platforms. Thanks so much. Please, I'm, I'm begging you. Please, please.